What is immunity? Of course, I do not have to report any disclosures relevant to this um, talk. If you look at the immune system and its efficiency against parasites, tumors, viruses, and bacteria, it only covers parts of all these domains. The numerics are such that the immune system of a human has to protect the human, the host, for at least 20 to 23 years to permit procreation of the next generation. Numbers-wise, viruses, of course, replicate at one to 10,000 or even greater, bacteria every 20 minutes, one in two, and so on. So the numbers of the hosts are limited, and the immune system guarantees sufficient survivors. I would like to now present several general aspects of the immune response, in particularly the role of antigen localization distribution over time. If a virus infects either skin lesions or mucosal surfaces, then the virus replicates, spreads to the draining lymph nodes, another two days are needed for that and from there there is systemic spread through the uh, blood and lymph uh, to all potential organs. It is of course this second stage that needs to be limited or reduced because otherwise infectious agents may reach the brain or other essential organs. The alternative to this general aspect of mucosal infections, including COVID-19, of course, is infection of rather peripheral cells, for example, cells of the epithelial germinal layer of skin infected with the papillomavirus. This virus doesn't start to replicate until these germinal cell layers start to become um, uh, differentiating prokeratinocytes, and it's only at this stage where the virus can actually replicate and transform the cells to become benign tumors. Now, at this stage, of course, the papilloma antigen is inaccessible to either lung or cells or the draining lymph node because the antigen is all peripheral. So in this case, there is no, to, no immune response induced. And of course, this situation also applies to sarcomas or carcinomas, tumors that have been generated from a single original cell and that reach draining lymph nodes or the spleen only once tumors, uh, tumor necrotizes and decays. Now, the other extreme situation is exemplified by hepatitis B virus or hepatitis C, where virus is transfused from the carrying mother to the offspring, either before or mostly at birth, during the birth process, where viral co virus containing maternal blood reaches the offspring and because of the dosing of very high doses of virus and the absence of an immune response in the newborn this virus will infect many many cells circulate in the circulation and there will be no immune response because it cannot be induced the general, second general aspect is that the viruses are either cell destructive, cytopathic, as shown here, or non cytopathic, as shown here. Against cytopathic cell destructive viruses, of course, a, a very efficient early immune response, particularly by antibody, reduces the spread of the virus and therefore is essential for hosts to survive lethal infections that usually can kill the host in within seven to at least 10 days. For non-cytopathic viruses such as hepatitis B or C, this immune response is not necessary, and therefore these viruses can be transfused, transferred from a virus carrier mother to the offspring without pathology. 
The pathology actually is the consequence of a T cell mediated immune response, be it by a CD8 or CD4 T cells that cause destruction of the infected target cell that otherwise would not have been destroyed because the virus is non-cytopathic. So T cell responses in general cause tissue damage, whereas antibody responses in general cause limitation of distribution via the lymphohemopoietic system. The next general point is to exemplify that any immune response involving single cells of the T cell line, the B cell line, macrophage antigen presentation line, need to meet in an anatomically defined environment of a lymph node or the spleen, so that these various T, B antigen presenting cells meet in an appropriate order. If this anatomy is destroyed, as in a mouse, LCMV infection in an immunocompetent host or in HIV conditions in humans where the CD8 cell cells destroy virus infected cells, particularly of the antigen presentation side, then the anatomy is destroyed and no immune response can be made any longer. This, of course, results in immunosuppression. So lymph nodes and spleens are essential. And if we take this all together, we can say that immunoprotection comprises roughly 90% of all the effective functions of the immune system. But in some cases, there is damaging effects of the immune response. If we know the etiological agent then we call this a virally or bacterially induced immunopathology. If we do not know the etiological agent, then we call this quite similar type of patho, uh, pathology in, in the lymph nodes, in the organ and all over the body as autoimmunity. And although this may be a bit overstated, uh, this should motivate us as medical doctors to look for etiological agents in any um, so-called autoimmune disease. Now, immune responses are characterized by specificity, memory, and so-called tolerance. Specificity is best defined by the serotype, for example, poliomyelitis type 1, 2, or 3. And usually these serotypes do not allow for broadly cross-reactive neutralizing antibodies because that basically excludes serotypic definition. Memory is basically an idea. Protection is what we can observe and measure. Tolerance, again, is an idea. It basically means we cannot measure a response. Now, specificity is basically defined by the serotype. And on the surface of all infectious agents, we find structures that are organized in multimeric form, either in this type or as a negative indenture to bind to a receptor. This antigen pattern can be easily recognized on any virus, but may be hidden partially by the glycocalyx. And of course, these determinants can be multimeric, very closely linked, or in some distance, this would be the case, of course, of um, COVID-19 virus. Now, the size of this antigenic site where neutralizing or protective antibody spined must have a certain size in the virus bacterial case. It's some 12 to 15 amino acids equivalent. And that, of course, is quite distinct from academic immunological studies that usually use phen phenyl groups, that is, benzoyl rings, 
that are equivalent to about one amino acid, so very small, and therefore the affinity in these types of assays is very low. Whereas for neutralizing antibodies against the virus, um, the affinity of neutralizing efficient protective antibodies is very high. Neutralizing antibodies against acute lethal infections that kill the host within five to seven days after initiation of the infection have a very characteristic um, 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 qualities. They are foreseen in the antibody repertoire without additional mutational maturation of affinity. In fact, we find neutralizing antibodies against all pathogenic viruses at the order of one in 30 dilution in normal serum. We know that the IgM response is relatively prompt because of this multimeric arrangement on the surface of the envelopes of viruses, bacteria, or of parasites, parasites, and the half-life of this IgM response that is completely T-help independent is only about 12 hours. We do not know the rules of an IgA response on mucosa. If you want to look for mucosal vaccines, we find that we basically have them, but they are of extremely short duration of about three months. For example, salmonella, uh, salmonella vaccines or vaccines against travelers diarrhea only protect about for three months. The multimericity of the antigenol on all infectious agents makes them induce an IgM response that is T independent. And it's the IgM that is induced very early at two to four days after initiation that reduces viremia and therefore saves brain, liver, and so on, the essential organs. Interesting non cytopathic viruses such as HIV or LCMV in mice do not show this one in 30 natural neutralization power, it's less than one in two. And these antibodies need extensive affinity maturation, usually taking more than 100 days. Now, if we look at T cell specificity, we have a problem because it's much more difficult to measure and cross reactivities or to measure something like an affinity or a binding quality is very difficult because we only have artificial means to do that. For example, tetramers or gamma interferon release or cytotoxicity, usually with L like lipopolysaccharide induced blasts. Whereas for the if biological efficacy, TB cooperation is a high level and high quality readout because without proper interaction, IgG switch does not occur. And the same is true that cytotoxic T cells need to be cytotoxically active against fibroblasts on virus infected targets. The primary repertoire as for B cells is not very huge. It's about 10 to the 3 or 10 to the 4. It's not 10 to the 12 or so. The antigen always has to be accessible in the lymph system itself, in lymph nodes or spleen. This is also true for B cells. Without lymph nodes, you cannot make a B cell response. The variability of the agent permits the escape, the agent to escape, be it for antibodies, but also for T cells, cytotoxic T cells, particularly relevant to HIV or hepatitis C, um, that are viruses that can mutate the T cell epitope and thereby escape a cytotoxic T cell response. All T cells also cause inflammation 
cause cell damage, interleukin release, and so on. Now let's go to memory, which we measure as protection because memory is just an idea. And we would like to argue here that memory as an idea doesn't exist mechanistically. There are no memory T and B cells. They are just specific T and B cells. And it, these cells must be antigen driven to protect. Why should we dare to question memory? It's very simple. If the first infection kills you, you don't need immunological memory. If the first infection does not kill you, everything is okay anyway, because a subsequent infection will also be dealt with properly with the available immune system. That indicates that words and meaning are not interchangeable. Protection is not the same as academically measured immunological memory, quicker and higher. Immunity or resistance against acute lethal infections has to happen within 10 days. For chronic infections, mutational variability persistence at low levels in the periphery is usually responsible. And this, of course, is only possible if the infection doesn't kill you in 10 days, but takes 20 years. Also remember that the co-evolution sets the stage. It's maternal antibodies that protect offspring because offspring are born immuno-incompetent and there's no transfer from other to offspring of cell immunity. We'll get to that. Of course, besides vaccines, antivirals, antibiotics, vector control, etc., are important. But immunologically, it's re-vaccinations, re-exposure to the relevant antigen that only guarantees protection. And this is illustrated in this experiment where we took specific pathogen-free quasi-sterile mice, infected them with a virus, a rabies-like virus, VSV, and we found that neutralizing antibodies over time fall below the, the, the protective level within about 50 days. However, if we measure the immune response via ELISA, a binding assay, where the affinity is low compared to this very high affinity, then we find that the test provides evidence for very long immunity. Now, this kinetics, in the absence of antigen, Protective neutralizing antibody titers only are available for about 50 days in this particular model infection, correlates with the fact that our plasma cells only have about a three day half life, and IgG has about a half life of 20 days. So that is not too far from this finding. Though, then, takes, let's take memory as defined by immunologists as quicker and higher after a priming response, and correlate that with immune protection. Now, we do have vaccines against smallpox, poliomyelitis, measles, and so on. We do not have vaccines against HIV, malaria, Lambda, tuberculosis, and salmonella. What is the difference? These are all controlled by neutralizing antibodies. This virus varies, malaria as well, Lambia vary, varies all the time continuously, and therefore antibodies simply lag behind protective levels while the agent runs ahead of it. Tuberculosis is quasi independent of antibodies, and BCG that was used as a vaccine is simply eliminated after one year about of vaccination and protects not any longer after this period of time. Thus, 
existing tuberculosis granuloma are the basis for further resistance against TB. Similar is the case with salmonellosis. And this correlates with the evolution of pregnancy, birth, and protection of the offspring by maternal antibody. Take a mother genetically AB with a father genetically CD. The offspring is AC in terms of histocompatibility. The mother would reject this foreign graft, but doesn't do so because the surface of the fetus arrangement uh, is naked of he, uh, of transplantation antigens. Therefore, the mother does not recognize the transplantation antigens. And the offspring here is immunoincompetent, so as not to be able to attack the mother. After birth, the offspring is immunoincompetent, but it has received via the placenta from the mother antibody against any of the infections and maintain the immune responses of the mother. In this particular example here, virus X, mother makes anti-X, the offspring has anti-X antibodies, and therefore early exposure after birth to the virus X will be either a zero effect or will uh, result in a reduced infection. If, however, the first exposure to this new virus, new to the offspring, happens only after maternal antibodies have decayed because of the defined half-life of roughly 20 days, then, of course, this infection is dealt with in a completely different way in that it is a original wild type situation and the lethality here is high whereas in these early stages under maternal antibody protection of course is virtually zero. This was formally tested um, by us in, in, um, in uh, a pox um, infection in mice but there has since been also confirmation of these findings findings with other virus infection. So maternal antibodies attenuate wild type infections in offspring if they happen early enough. Therefore, we conclude memory is a lab, lab artifact. Protection is antigen dependent, antigen driven. Only the serotype specific neutralizing antibody titers predict protection against acute lethal infections, and they are all contained already in the IgM repertoire. Maternal antibodies are important to protect the baby and to attenuate the usual childhood infections. And of course, variability of the agent is a general problem. Now, let me just mention something in addition to the highly specific antibody or T-cell immune protection, there's also a so-called infection immunity, where one infection, for example, tuberculosis or leishmaniasis, protects against unrelated infections. In this case, a classical experiment by Macanis, George Macanis in the 60s, is illustrated if mice are infected with TB, and then super infect with listeria, they will be protected against listeriosis. If, however, this TB lesion is excised two months after the TB infection, and two months later, this listeria infection is set, these mice are no longer protected. Meaning that an ongoing infection with TB or Leishmania will confer a non-specific macrophage activation, gamma interferon, TNF, et cetera, mediated generalized protection that does not create a memory. 
Now, just briefly, what is tolerance? Immunological tolerance means we cannot measure a response. And this, for example, has been already mentioned for the um, papillomavirus warts infection, where no immune response is initiated early, but subsequently, eventually, it will be after cauterization or necrotizing uh, activities by the, the doctor. Alternatively, the neonatal transfusion with virus hepatitis B or C also um, creates no immune reaction. And in this case, it is the deletion by excessive antigen everywhere that correlates to that finding. I summarize. I've talked about specificity, correlating with serotype, memory, which is best, better mentioned or measured as protection, and tolerance measured as no response. The textbooks all define these things differently from what I've presented. So my recommendation, recommendation is, of course, do not believe in textbooks, but believe in your clinical experience. Specificity means protection or transplant rejection, etc. Protective immunity is antigen driven or antigen dependent. And this is best documented with TB infections that are maintained in the granuloma virtually lifelong and that actually protect against certain super infections. The same is true for yellow fever or pox viruses. Particularly well studied has been measles because measles virus remains in the host as a crippled virus that lacks the matrix protein gene. The antigen is there, but there's no virus measurable. No immune response is seen when the al Antigen is always in the lymphatic system, like after neonatal hepatitis virus infection, or when the antigen is maintained strictly extralymphatically. And this, of course, includes tumors of the carcinoma and the sarcoma type. Now, let's finish with a view on COVID-19. We know virtually nothing about mucosal IgA. We only know from oral salmonella immunizations or cholera that IgA memory or protection, we try to avoid memory, is rather short-lived, maybe to three months, whereas IgG is usually maintained for longer because of the transfer of maternal antibodies to the offspring. Viruses or any agent can persist peripherally, herpes viruses in neurons or epithelial cells of the lung or the kidney, papilloma virus in germinal cells of the skin, worms in the gut. Younger patients usually are okay particularly in developing countries, because natural resistance is maintained by a great number of concurring infections, including TB, parasites, dirt, and you have it. Oldies, in, in contrast, have accumulated many chronic in, inflammatory diseases due to chronic infections, or chronic substance abuse, or chronic particle inhalation. And this, of course, enhanced immunopathology maintains COVID-19 infection via endothelia. Let me finish with some very general conclusions. Co-evolution explains why no vaccine is available against HIV, TB, malaria. Its variability, persistence, and the disease causing often also immunosuppressive immunopathology. Words mislead, 
mislead antigen is the most important regulator of an immune response. If the antigen is there, localized for a short time, an immune response is induced. If it's eliminated, you need revaccination, re-exposure to actually keep the response going. To measure something like ELISA antibodies that does not prove biological relevance. This is very important. Measure protection, measure the equivalence of protective neutralizing antibodies. Wrong promises, for example, the promise to develop an HIV vaccines in two years is simply wrong. These hopes lead to hopes, but no results. Protection, that is reduction of disease or death, are relevant. That's what we have to measure and observe clinically. And that's, of course, a good chance for MDs and vets to do relevant research because a disease indicates that pathophysiological mistakes have occurred and this mistake or this damage is relevant for health. And of course, to know, learn, and then act accordingly is probably the most important, including prevention, antibiotics, antivirals, vector control, education, for example, about, about vaccines. And I think all these particularly aspects of education, we have to do better because who else should and can do this as a convincing teacher? Of course, this work I've summarized is the result of many, many years, many doctoral students, postdocs, including Hans Hengartner here in the front row with whom I've shared the, the activities in the lab in Zurich for about 30 years. And this view is a amalgamation of all these experiments, ideas of worldwide colleagues, but particularly of this group. With best thanks, sincerely yours, Rolf Zinkermarkel.